Welcome to Around the Farm. I'm Steve Gregerson here with Site Manager Andy Height and our special guest, Dwayne Thompson. Uh, we brought Dwayne along today to kind of introduce some of the people that are part of the Friends of the Farm Council. So uh, Exactly. We want, to, we want to let people know, you know, the, the breadth of the board a little bit and, and what has draw, drawn people to the board. And so that was Dwayne's turn in the barrel today. <laughs> well, thank you for inviting me. Well, we're glad to have you with us. Just a couple things before we get started into some other stuff. Dwayne, uh, I know you've been on the board for, for a few years now. Yeah. What drew you to, to want to be a part of, a part of this? Well, um, Johnson Farm, of course, has just always been a special place in my heart. I grew up in Piqua, and um, we came out here all the time. We, we spent a lot of summers out here um, riding the canal boats and visiting the house and um, just a lot of fond memories. So as an educator, I get to work with a lot of teachers that bring our students out here, and um, I've always advocated for that. We've, all of our fourth graders come out here every year. And um, just bringing that educational aspect to the board and, and drawing that relationship with um, our district. and. Um, I, love, I love to be a part of the community too. So. Well, and, and that was one of the reasons why you know we wanted you on the board because of the tie into the educational uh, community because it, it's very important. I always tell people you know the outreach to the schools is one of the most important things that we do, yeah. and having uh, you know your background with curriculum and and the student needs you know is, is a good tie for us. Um, let, let's talk about schools for a little bit. Um, and you know we talk about you know we've talked about bringing all these fourth graders out here where does this fit into the fourth fourth grade curriculum I mean, what's what's the value of a trip to the johnston farm well we're always looking for opportunities to extend our classroom and open up the walls so students can um, learn um, with hands-on types of experiences and um, this is a gem i mean not many historical sites offer what this does for students. So they're learning about the canal, they're learning about the work that Johnson did with Indians, they're learning about very time period pieces going through the house. Um, you don't find that kind of artifact, um, those artifacts that you see in the house that are that genuine from the time period. So getting students to um, read a textbook is one thing, but to come here and see just how great this site is and what that time period was like is just a whole other aspect of learning. So um, the social studies curriculum really comes to life when we bring students out here and engage them in this part of our community. That's, that's one of the things we work very hard at. Now, Mr. Gregerson, you are not an artifact. <laughs> from oh, I thought he was talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> We want to clear that up. That's again. good. I, I thought, hmm. Now you touched on, on one of the things that I, I like to tell the students when, when I get to interact with them is, is, you know, they are lucky because most fourth graders in Ohio, when they read about this period of time, that's, they, they that's read the extent, about it. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe they'll see a video. Maybe they'll, you know, one of the film strips are, that, that's old age now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, they, they might so, see a, might see a video. Uh, but when students come here, they get to come to the place where the stuff really happened and, yeah. and where the people really were. And I, I think you're right. I do think that that, that kind of drives the point home a little bit better. And, and I, I'm going to sell the site. You don't find better storytellers than what you guys offer. I mean, from you to, to Marla to when you ride the canal boat, um, Jim Vetter. When you, when you come out here and you experience this, and it is a great experience, you hear great storytelling that, again, just brings it to life. So um, you don't get that at every historical site. I mean, I take my family to lots of places across the nation, and we are right up there at the top in terms of what we provide with students and in the community at large. And I think sometimes people forget about that. You know, you get the idea that, you know, you've got to go 50 miles to, uh, to have anything, yeah. a anything neat or anything of value. So, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's good to hear, a, you know, from somebody else's perspective. I've said for years that our staff and volunteers is as good yeah. as anybody in the nation, but you know, I know you've traveled, you've been to a lot of yes. sites, and so you've got a little bit different look at it than what mm -hmm. other people have had. And we offer some really great um, programming throughout the year, so I think that just really enriches this too. I think sometimes people think, I visited the farm a couple years ago, or maybe I came to a festival or I did something and that was their experience. But when you look at all the programming that we offer throughout the year and, and come and really engage in those aspects of it, it becomes more personal and it, it opens up new opportunities to see what this 
significance is to, to the area and the state and even the nation. You know, I know that these guys like Steve and the rest of the staff, one of the things they do in the wintertime, I, I sometimes I tell people jokingly that we got the most curious staff around, <laughs> and then they wonder what I mean, but I, and I, then I qualify that by curious. I mean that they spend a lot of their own time yeah. reading about time period, reading about events, so that when when they do come back in in the in the spring, a lot of times we get a hey, did you hear what I? This is what I learned this winter. So you're exactly you know the stories change from year to year as the breadth of knowledge absolutely uh, exchange. You know we've looked at uh, one of the things we looked at. We've you know when I first came here, all you heard about was John Johnston. And which is not a bad thing, but you know we've expanded that now. You know, we've talked about we talk about his wife, we talk about his mother. We're expanding it into the children. Yeah. So if somebody hasn't been here for a while, they do get a, a different story. I love what Marla's done on the site with the blog. Sometimes she'll take a current event and then she'll find something that they journaled about back then. Maybe the weather, how they survived a really yeah. cold winter or something, and then she'll she'll post those in conjunction with what's happening today, and, and you can see how they dealt with things versus how we are, and again, just correlations, and it's just a great opportunity to see how the impact of their lives were in this area. And, and we are fortunate because the Johnstons, the whole family seem to be prolific letter writers, yeah. and so we've got all of that, uh, all that written history, you know, and, and it's, it's you know, in, in, in education jargon, it's primary source documents, and you can't... <laughs> Doesn't get better than that. You, you can't beat that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so does that mean that when Andy tells people that at least something I tell the kids when I'm in the canal boat with them or in the canal room, some of it is the truth? Some of it is the truth. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was just, you know, making sure that I... But with that, you know, I've been on the canal boat. I bring, we bring our kids every year, and, of course, they're going to ask questions. Right. And, and the questions are always answered. And, you know, I've got inquisitive kids, so um, <laughs> they'll, they'll just keep asking and asking. And that's what's so great about, I think, the people that serve out here is... Um, they really know their material and their content, and they can answer pretty well with confidence and, again, stick to the facts and the primary sources that they've spent so much time reading and, and studying for the benefit of our, our visitors. Yeah, and it's interesting with the, the guys on the boat that they're pretty well informed, too, about things because yeah. we get visitors, you know, that come along sometimes and say, oh, the Johnson Farm, let's go look at it. Well, we get a group of school kids, but they'll say, oh, that'll be all right. You yeah. know? And, and a lot of times the adult will have some, adults will have some questions that are pretty tough, but yeah. the guys seem to know, you know, what they're talking about and can pretty well answer questions so that, you know, it does make sense about things. And uh, that's, I don't know, it's a, it's a nice feel to, to be able to offer that. It really that. is, <clears throat> yeah. And I know one of the, one of the other things that that I see I, I when I talk to the teachers who come here, they can never tell who the volunteer is and who the staff member yeah. is, uh, and and that I think that's that's a testament to everybody that you know you know it's it's a seamless. Mm -hmm. um, transition from one person to another. And you made me here. think of something when you when you said that. Um, the relationship you have with teachers in the area is great too because um, I know we've just recently talked about we're already planning for next fall's trip but um, getting you on the calendar so you can come to the classrooms and get students prepared for their trip out here. So it's not just that our kids get on a bus and come out here and get a trip and then go back and they're done. Our teachers work on getting that prepped. Um, you make that offer of, hey, we can come out and do some extra pieces. And there's some follow-up. The website is fantastic. I know our teachers use that. So um, a lot of really good correlations between what happens in the classroom and what happens when we extend that learning out here. And, and we do get, you know, I think, you know, all of us do get a pretty decent relationship with the teachers that come here because, you know, after, after two or three years, you start to say, oh, yeah, I remember that <laughs> teacher. And, and they, they, they get a, you get a rapport with those teachers. I know, uh, and I, I don't think I've ever told you this story, but when you started here, you know, after, after, oh. Jerry, after Jerry had retired, um, I had one teacher one day, you were back here just, you know, doing your normal stuff, and the teacher says, <laughs> she said, the older gentleman that used to be here says, did he pass? No, I said, no, he didn't pass away. <laughs> so, My you know, favorite they, they know who's coming, you know, they know who's yeah. going to be here. My favorite relationship story is we had a student that had the, um, I think it was a black, um, what was it made of, not onyx, um, obsidian. The arrowhead, obsidian. And um, the teacher was showing students that it fell from her hands and shattered on the floor, and she was mortified. 
and the student was mortified because he wasn't supposed to bring it to school and he did. <laughs> so a quick call to Andy was, Andy, can you help us help this teacher and this student? Um, they're, they're both ready to just, you know, crumble to pieces themselves. And you were just fantastic about what can we do to help these two people out. And um, a very happy ending to the story, um, I must say. But what sites can you call and say, help us out like this and get those kinds of connections? So I, well, just I, I think one of the things that helps us maybe is, is when you look around our our, our folks, there's so many of us that are either retreaded teachers <laughs> or, or, or have a tie into the classroom yeah. in, in some way. And I think that brings a different attitude maybe yeah. Yeah. Um, than, than what somebody that doesn't. And, and the ones that, I would agree. Ones, the, the other staff members that maybe don't have an education background have been around us long enough that it rubs off. Yeah. yeah. And, and you start to see that, that attitude. And I think that, you know, we really do work very hard, I think, of talking with a visitor, with a student, or with an adult, rather than you know just doing yeah. the, the spiel. One of my favorite stories is I, I took our, we as a family, we went to the Yorktown battlefield. I had always wanted to go to Yorktown. Mm -hmm. And we started to tour, and this poor girl that was doing the tour, she was just like a tape recorder. You know, she just had her spiel yeah. down, and somebody asked a question. She didn't know where she was. She had to start over. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and I think proof of, of what happens out here is in the fact that so many schools come back and, and there's not a lot of space left in the calendar to keep adding because we have such a success rate out here that districts pretty much when they're done with their trip say, sign us up for next yeah. year. Right. And that's a true testament to you and your staff and I think what happens out here. And, and, and as serving on the board when we talk about that, it's always reassuring to know We've got that steady flow of students coming in here and really capitalizing on what we have to offer. Yeah, you guys are going to have you guys are going to have fun come about the eighth of April. Oh yeah, <laughs> all right. As you Good. call them, the yellow troop yeah. carriers will yep. be uh, will be returning, but it's a lot of fun. It is. Yeah, the the, the, the students are, are are really fun, and and I think it's a testament to the teachers too because. The, the ones that have been here several times have an idea. They know pretty much, you know, yeah. what we're going to cover, and the, and the students really come. Each year I can see the kids coming a little bit better prepared maybe than, than what they had been in the past. Um, you do, know, with, do you have a favorite question the kids ever asked you? <sighs> no, because it, it, it always varies so much yeah. that, um, yeah. you know, I don't know that there is, down here I don't think, in, in, in the, the museum side, I don't know that there is so much. Okay. I know at the farmhouse, one of the questions they almost always get asked is, and it has nothing to do with history, is they'll look around and say, what's that thing in the corner that's blinking? <laughs> and then they see the security, the security system. Yeah. Uh, and, you know. But that's a great question because they never had anything like that. Uh -uh. So they recognize the notice that there's something different. Yeah, and well, one of the things down here we get a lot, a lot of fun with, with, the, uh, with the artifacts and in the case from the Pick Willany site, there's two two gun parts off the stock that are called butt plates. Uh -huh. <laughs> Fourth graders are fascinated yeah. with butt plates. <laughs> I get right. You'll post on Facebook a close up of an object or a picture of an object that isn't around today. And um, I always show it to my own children and say, let's see if we can figure this out. And I try to cheat and use Google Gloss glasses and all kinds of things. and. We get stumbled on it, but um, that that always prompts my own children to ask even more questions about why did they use that and what's that for, or why didn't they just do this because they only know about current, tight, modern, and, you know. And that's hard. That that's hard to get the students yeah. to go back a couple hundred years yeah. and think about lifestyles. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I get laughed at sometimes, but I, I when I'm talking about trade and things like that, I, I pull it into to, to go into a store today, go into Walmart, go into, yeah. you know, Sears or someplace. Well, what do you do when you go through the aisles and what are you looking for? And you know, it, it's hard to pull them. You know, that that time period is so hard to to reach back that far. Yeah. My, my own son, his favorite question for a couple of years was, where, where are the canaligators? Because we heard students talk about the canaligators. There and, are um, more students yeah. in West Central Ohio <laughs> looking for the canaligators yeah, yeah. Than, than you can count. And the other thing that he's responsible for while he's sitting here, we have a lot of students now that's name is Bob. Bob. That's the Every uh, kid's name is Bob, right? Well, you know, I, I keep telling them, I said that I, when you come through the double doors, the invisible ray hits you and it 
only thing that affects is anybody under 14. And I said, changes your name to Bob while you're in here with me. And then I get everybody's name right every yeah, single time yeah. and nobody feels bad because I forgot your name. And a couple of the teachers have kind of given it away on me, but uh, <laughs> but the kids, uh, well, I, I, different times I've been out a couple of times now, somebody will say, hey, Bob. And, yeah. oh, I don't know, it's one of the canal, your kids are out yeah, for the canal boat. And, occasionally, though, it's funny, you'll get, a, you'll, and I've seen it happen, you'll get a student who is really insulted that he calls him Bob. <laughs> That's not my name, and no Bob well, you Ray. Spell it really me. unique. Just, just give it a really different kind of spelling, and I think you'll be able to say it. Yeah, you know, we have a good time. You know, it's it, it's enjoyable. Uh, you know, I I think we we make some some positive uh, impact on the kids. Another way that we do that, and another thing we wanted to talk about today, uh, is coming up next week. Um, with the uh, National History Day contest, yeah, yeah. and you've been involved with that for several years. Steve has been. Yes. Uh, I've been involved. It seems like forever. Um, <laughs> I'm one of these strange people. I started my my first involvement with with, with History Day was actually when it very first started, yeah. as as taking students to History Day, and then it evolved into uh, judging History Day. And now we coordinate the contest, so it's it's interesting to see you know that, that from from all kinds of different angles. And again, let's go back to what you see. Uh, you know, because I kind of just generally explain history day is kind of like a science fair for history, and people yeah, can yeah. they get that. Yeah. Um, you know, what do you see as, as as the value? You know, what does that bring to? So. I I'm a curriculum guy, so I get real excited on that. So um, what's so neat about it is there are so many you know, sports events and those kinds of competitions, and they're great. Don't get me wrong, but from curriculum standpoint, I want some com competition type things for students to participate academically. So um, when I can find things for this age level, I really try to get them engaged because, again, the, the secondary level will do a lot of competition type things. So History Day will focus on um, from fifth grade all the way on up through. And then we do have a student this year that's a senior who has done it since I, fifth grade. I, I was going to wow. mention We have that. to talk about her because I'm so excited about what she's doing. But um, the, the program has grown. And what, what happens is students have a chance to really explore a topic. So this year the topic is exploration, encounter, and exchange. And um, instead of the typical textbook or the, the, the known kind of things, Students are encouraged to find some local pieces or some, some local history or something that's really unique that somebody may not know a lot about. And um, we have great people sitting here, um, our local library with Jim Oda and um, Gary Meek and just um, kids can't go there and fail because they reach out and they, they find out some different topics and they're just going to get smothered with some really good ideas. So um, they go through a very good process. They start really kind of in October. Mm -hmm. We start early. Picking their topics and narrowing them down and doing some research and really getting to know their, their content before they get to the fun part, which is designing the, the yeah. board that you talk about. And um, some really cool boards that we've seen over the years. One of them this year I wanted to highlight for people to, to come and look at is somebody's doing the flood of 1913 and they've devised a board that's gonna show how the water rises to the bridge. So I don't know how it's going to happen, but I've heard them talk about it. So that's one of the projects that I want to see, and I hope it becomes a reality. So it um, should be something kind of neat um, to watch, you know, come to. It's, it, it, it's, it's always interesting to see the different, di different type, different uh, projects students yes. come up with. One of the things that I always tell the judges is, you know, regardless of how different or off the wall the project seems. Let the student explain how it fits the theme. Yeah, and they can. Um, I, I, I've been a judge. I, I've done lots of, I've worked with students. Um, but I, I've seen projects and I think, what, what, what is this? And you start talking to the student and, and you come away with this whole different perspective on why they chose the topic mm -hmm. or what they researched. And it's, it's amazing what some of the students come up with. They, they, all sorts of strange things. I know years ago, one, one that somebody did down in southeastern Ohio, don't appreciate this. Yeah, it's right up your alley. Um, I, I, I don't even remember what the theme was anymore, but this student topic was, did Thomas Crapper actually exist? <laughs> and, and he went through, they went through, and, and you know, according to this project, yes, Thomas Crapper was the inventor of the flush toilet. 
Well, yeah. you know, so so that's a fun thing for, for students to do, but they, they gain tons of skills, mm -hmm. um, a lot of relevancy. There's tons of reading, researching, writing, so the language arts fits really well. Um, in fact, we've had language arts teachers sure. help. Um, our gifted teachers have helped often. Um, we've, our social studies teachers do. And there's opportunities for them not only to compete here, but then to go to a state level and even national level and winning scholarships. So um, I guess that kind of brings us to, to Annie, uh, Annie Fletcher, who I remember her in fifth grade doing her first project. And every year uh, she just has continued. So this year promises to be her, her grand finale, so to speak. And she's doing the Fall Creek Massacre, which oh, wow. I know has always been a great um, topic for people out here yep. to discuss. And, and the, um, just how significant that was to yep. American history. So that's a perfect example of something that a lot of people don't study, right. they don't know about, but um, she's gotten in there and kind of you know, brought it to the surface and she's gonna really talk about I, I, I think its she impact. Will. So I'm real excited about that. Uh, and you know, we talk about science, uh, science fair, um, History Day. Uh, students in History Day, they can do several different kinds of topics. They can do things individually, they can do things in, in groups, uh, they can write historical papers if, if they like to write, if they're tech, techies, they can do websites, uh, websites or documentaries, drama. they can do dramas, yeah. um, and or, or the, 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 the trifold yeah. exhibits yeah. that we think about. Uh, and if people have a chance next Saturday uh, out at the junior high, after like 11 o'clock, uh, the gym's going to be open to people yeah. to uh, to visit and take a look at the exhibits, and it is fun yeah. to walk through and, and go through and see what what sorts of exhibits they have. And it's not just pick with students that are there. We've got students from uh, Champaign County, my um, Montgomery okay. County. There, there's students from uh, from Dark County that are coming, uh, and and to the north as well. So you know we get we, you know it's not just pick with kids. And you can you can see an evolution, you know, when we get teachers that have been there several times, they yeah. start to know, yes. you know, what what the judges are going to be looking yeah. for, what the students can do, and you look at either a junior high project, which can be sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, fifth well, and a fifth grade mm -hmm. is a junior project, or the high schools, and you know, when sometimes you put the junior high project beside the high school project, and you yeah. can't tell a yeah. difference. No, um, you know, I last last couple of years I've done the junior projects and uh, I'll tell you what those kids not only have done a great job with the exhibit they're doing but part of what we looked at as judges was you know all right you know dad dads did all this and yeah, you know yeah. no the kids no. know what they're talking about they've researched it they've got and, it down and, and it's so fun to watch those students because they'll go around taking pictures and they'll ask questions how did you do this what you so they're getting ideas for next year right and they just have dialogue with students they've never had contact mm -hmm. with so we're helping students network we're helping them get some other ideas from other students and it, they do they'll take that information and plan their next um, event so yeah it's it's a neat it's really a neat day I mean yeah. the kids do a great job with it and, and it ends with a great awards <laughs> recognition where the students get get recognized and and called up and um, there's that um, kind of the Oscar effect where there's that anticipation <laughs> of who's going to go on yeah. who's going to get and, 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 and if they're and, lucky I'll pronounce their name yeah. right <laughs> yeah, that's always one of my oh. fears <laughs> Because you know, sometimes sometimes students take it in pretty good humor, and yeah. sometimes they don't. <laughs> and I've had both happen. So, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so you know, that's coming up. That's going to be next weekend, uh, March fifth. March fifth. Uh, yeah. Saturday, March fifth. If you want to come out and take uh, see, you know, see History Day. No cost. No cost. Yep. It, it's it's free. There's going to be a concession stand. The High School Honor Society is going to have a concession mm -hmm. stand out there as well. So. There, there's food that's very reasonably priced, yeah. and you can look at the exhibits. You can go in and maybe watch a performance or two. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's a good time to get immersed in in history for a while. And and the junior high, we're we're so fortunate uh, to have a facility like the junior high that just works so well for that. Yeah. Um, we've had several different homes uh, since we've been doing history day here in Pickle. We started yeah. it. We started at Edison. And we really, in a lot of ways, outgrew Edison. Uh, then we moved to the Career Center. And when they were going through the renovations there, we had to look for new homes. So we went to the high school for a couple of years. And, and then uh, Mr. Clark said, hey, what about the junior high over here? It just sits. We take it over. 
Uh, we do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I can't say enough about the, uh, the, the, the custodial staff. They're always so helpful. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it just works out so well for, the, for everybody. So we're pleased to be able to use that facility yeah. as well. So that's going to be next weekend. Now, we've got some other events coming up. I want to, and, you know, you, we've talked about these on the board, and we want to make sure we make people aware of them. Um, the next thing is coming up on, uh, Saturday, on Thursday, April 21st, an event we're really looking forward to. We've got a gentleman here uh, that is going to do a first person of Mark Twain. That would and be good. that's going to be on the fourth floor of the hotel. Uh, looking forward to that. We're going to have a whole evening of it. We're going to, uh, uh, we're going to start about 6.30, and uh, we're going to have heavy hors d'oeuvres for people. Almost supper, but hmm. maybe you know. Now you you yeah. might want to eat before I you come. I might have to. Yeah. You know, you'll, you'll have to, to have Make a snack. A double for the yeah, we'll, we'll have, You'll have to have a snack before you come. Yes. Um, and you know that'll be for 45 minutes to an hour. And while that's going on, uh, we're going to have a brass quintet that's going to be playing period music in in the ballroom. So we're, we're we're looking forward to that. Um, that's that, that should be a lot of fun for people. Uh, and then about 7.30, um, he, we're going to have Mark Twain. Uh, his name is Warren Brown from Indiana uh, that does, does Mark Twain. I've seen some videos of it. I've seen some reviews that they say he's better than Hal Holbrook. Wow. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. And then after his, his formal presentation, it's, it's like if, if you remember Chautauqua mm -hmm. programs yeah. we did here, it's very similar to that, uh, very similar to when we did the... Um, uh, Dickens program mm -hmm. and the Andrew Montour. Uh, he'll then, at the end of his formal presentation, he'll answer questions as Mark Twain. So if you want to know something about Mark Twain, uh, you know, they've studied them so much, they really yeah, do become do. a person. Yeah. Uh, you can ask questions about Mark Twain and then you can also, he'll break character and then answer questions as Warren Brown. So it, it's, it, it's a great evening. This is something Neat. that the uh, the Friends Council is sponsoring. We've got help from the library to do this. Uh, another, uh, another supporter is also um, Comfort Inn. And uh, the Miami Valley Center Mall is also a supporter of, of this this year. So we've got several sponsors involved in, in this. And we want to thank all those people that are, that are making this possible because it's, you know, there's, there's, there are some costs involved. Sure. Uh, and this, it, it's a reservation event, sort of, but you know, the, the fourth floor is big enough that we really don't need to worry too much about it, but about a week out, we do need to have a, a count for the, uh, for the caterer. Yeah. So, and if you're interested in coming, uh, give us a call out here, 773-2522. Uh, we'll, be we'll, we'll be getting more information out about that very shortly because it's really coming up. Yeah. Before too long, we get through History Day, we're going to be ready for Mark Twain. And then right after Mark Twain, uh, we're going to offer people a chance to go to the baseball park. All right. Uh, if you've never been to Fifth Third Field to watch the Dragons, you've got to go down because it really is more than baseball. It is. Uh, it's, it's an entertainment yeah. event. <laughs> and there's no other way to explain it. And uh, we've got an opportunity that we're going to be selling a, a Raffle. It's a raffle. I'll, you know, we'll call it what it is. Uh, but uh, you can buy a ticket, and then if you're the winner of the raffle, uh, you can take yourself and 19 other people, uh, and you get one of the boxes up on the yeah. top of the stadium. And um, next month, we're going to talk to uh, the, our, our first two winners so people can really find out more about that. Uh, because they just treat people down. They just treat them so well. As they, yeah, they, get, they, do. they get first class treatment. Um, you know, they, they really enjoy it. They, you know, they get a couple parking passes. They get ball caps. Uh, there's the opportunity to put in as the, all kinds of different food if, if you want. That's up to the person yeah. that And wins. it's good, too. I can attest to that. So what I'm Why is, is it always when it comes to food? I can't imagine. What I'm hearing is there's a great opportunity to engage your family and have fun while supporting our local history site. Exactly. And that's what we try to do. What can we do that provides great opportunities for the community, gets people engaged, but also keep us uh, uh, going? And we have great participa participation, but more of that just reassures us to keep doing more programming and to keep this going. So. And, and we work very hard to make sure that the things that we do 
are family oriented. Yes. You know, we don't want people to come out and worry about, okay, what are my grandkids going to be exposed to? You know, is this a safe environment here? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we work at, work at that as well. So, uh, and I think that's a testament too when we see, you know, we see the families um, that are here. You know, I, we call them frequent flyers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your family amongst yeah, them yeah. Uh, are here several times, you know, each, each year, or we can tell with the grandparent. Uh, there, there's one, one family in particular in Piqua that comes to mind. I can always tell when the grandkids are there because yeah. they bring a different set of grandkids <laughs> yeah. out uh, each, each time. So, uh, you know, and we, we do encourage people. You, you mentioned something earlier. You know, just because you've been here once, you know, it's, it's different. It is. Uh, I did a, I, I had a, a class here from Miami University the other day, and so I took them over to the farmhouse. Well, they set the farmhouse for, for, for the school groups, and I look around, and doggone if they haven't moved stuff. <laughs> and you said, over here. Yeah, over here <laughs> something is new. not <laughs> what I was going to talk about. It's someplace else. <laughs> we'll go find it. Yeah. Um, and then something else we, we started last year. Um, the um, Miami Nation brought in an exhibit that, that told their story yeah. from removal from 1846 to the present. Yeah. There's no pla I don't know that there's really any place in Ohio that does that. Uh, they talk about you know the end of the native occupation, but I thought that's not right yeah. because you know that, that that culture hasn't ceased to exist. The people haven't ceased to exist. Let's right. tell their story. Yeah. So last year the Miami Nation told their story and did it very well. People really enjoyed yeah. that exhibit. And this year, the Eastern Shawnee are coming in to do the same thing. They're going to tell their story from the removal to the present time. So that's something new. And next year, we're working on trying. I'm hopeful that the Wyandotte will tell their story. We want to get all six of the Ohio tribes mm -hmm. to tell their story. So for six years, there will be a new exhibit at the Johnston Farm, yeah. which is hard in a museum setting to have a new exhibit every year. But that's, again, it's, it's kind of a three-in-one package. I mean, you can come and learn about the canal. You can do the Native American experience. You can learn about Johnson's family and their, their time period living. And, again, not many sites mm -hmm. can no. offer that significant of, of education and programming for their visitors. And, and the thing is neat, you know, we get people, and, and Steve can attest to this too, because, you know, we get a lot of people that are interested in, interested in the canal. But... After they've been here for a little bit, then they then they get hooked on on maybe the Native American yes. side, or they get hooked on the Johnston story, yeah. and then we start to see you know we start to cultivate these relationships, and you start to see people coming back. Yeah. So, um, you know that is we are unique. I tell people you know that most historical sites talk about one person or one period of time or or one event. Yeah. You know, but we can span such a breadth of history that it, it does does offer yes. that opportunity. It's a great site. And if people do get hooked on history and want to, um, you know, want to come out several times, uh, we also, and we're going to be starting this now, so, uh, we'll be starting a membership campaign for, yes. the, for the Friends Council as a membership organization. Uh, we're over, I think, over 250 members now. I remember the first year when we got to 50. <laughs> wow, 50 <laughs> members! And, and the advantage is you get updated communication on a regular basis. So you, you learn about programming, our hours of operation. You, you get discounts for some of the special events. Um, you get special pricing for your family to come in. There's, there's so many benefits to supporting our site, but also you get the benefits as a family um, and, a, and a person that's joining, joining the friends. And, friend and group, one of the so. things, you know, one of the things that's happened in, in through the years, the friends council, which you're, you're a part of, you know, has assumed the day-to-day -day management of the site. We're basically now a local site yeah. uh, with ties to a parent organization, which really benefits us. But, you know, with that being in charge of day-to-day -day operation, we also yeah, have the financial responsibility, yeah. which is where the events, uh, the Mark Twain event, the, the, the Dragons game, yeah. things like that all come together to help us, you know, keep things going. So, uh, you know, it's, yes. and, and we try, we try very hard to keep membership at a reasonable level. Um, and of course, we encourage people to, if, if they want to support us past that, we're always happy to, to, to accept that too. So. We do have many people that will join but they'll also give a donation yes. because they know the importance of our site locally and it is a privilege really to be a locally run site. Um, there is a responsibility to it but it, that's, a, that's a real privilege to be able to maintain something of this significance 
in our community. Mm -hmm. So it's always appreciated when people step forward and, and, and support us in that way. It's always appreciated. So, and, and we, we certainly appreciate, you know, the members that do come out, the people that do renew their memberships. That mailing is going to be going out here pretty shortly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if, you, if you are a current member, we certainly encourage you to renew your membership for this year. Uh, if you've never been a member and you're, we've piqued your interest, um, join we, jo come join us. We, Steve needs all the friends he can get. That's right. I needed some. Bad. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we'd be happy to have that. And there's some people that have been a member and, you know, for yeah. whatever reason, you know, have not renewed. You know, by golly, you'll, you'll be welcome back and won't cost you anything extra. We have friends beyond Pickle, too. Yes, we, we do. We've got them across the United States, I, and that's the, really the, special. The, we, we, have, we have members in Florida. Yeah. We have members in the state north. <laughs> <laughs> Task. Uh, uh, and we do have members out uh, you know, to the west, sure. so you know yeah. we do kind of cover the country, we and it's, it's interesting when you look at and, and all over Ohio. Yeah. So it's it's really interesting. So yes. you know, I hope people, you know, that's one of the reasons why we would like to bring the board members in to to get your perspectives on the site. You know, yeah. what's driven you here, um, and um, you know what, what we try to work on. So I think we've. Uh, Pretty well wrapped Did we leave anything up. out? I can't think of anything. The yellow troop carriers arrived the 8th, you say? 8th of April, 8th of April. Is, is, is the first, uh, first, so we've first, got first group. And we've staff got gearing up. Staff, when, staff. when are we going to start opening for the public? Uh, that, good question. Uh, we open to the public officially the uh, first Thursday in June. Okay. We're in June, July, and August, Thursday through Sunday, and we'll be talking about the summer programs in the next next month or so, so people Great. see what's going on. That'll be on the on the website here shortly. Uh, now, even in, in April, May, September, and October, we're open Monday through Friday for the yellow troop carriers, mm -hmm. but, you know, people, you know, the public can come in, they're more than welcome, and a lot of times, once once they, they get over the fact of seeing 100 fourth graders here <laughs> uh, and, and finish having their stroke over the number of kids here, they really start to enjoy watching the kids. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And because you really get a little bit different look at yeah. the site if you follow along with the school trip than, than what you might in this because of just exactly sure. what you said of the questions. Yeah. Well, what's this, what's that, how did they do that? Yeah. Uh, because one of the things we found is, is the students tend not to be bashful. Yeah. It, it, it's, fun to, it's, it's fun to see what people And say. sometimes the adults will be more, more encouraged to ask. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, you see adults going, mm -hmm, you know, but kids start asking questions and, and we've had that experience on the boat several times that you know, the kids kind of start so, sure. oh, it's okay to ask questions. Yeah. I, I will the kids will laugh at me if I ask questions. We have, so. we have tour buses that will come sometimes. We, we have, mm -hmm. we have some motor, co we have some motor coach groups. So we have a, a variety in the, in the summertime. We see, uh, see a lot of, uh, of, of the uh, summer school yes. program for daycare program. So we get a real wide range of, of groups. We go anything from, you know, the kindergartners to, well, you know, the other day we had, you know, college students here and an adult group. So it's it's always fun. But one of the things I've, I've found out and I, I've told the staff is start with the fourth grade questions <laughs> because just because they're an adult doesn't mean they've got a, a sure. big body of knowledge about right. the experience. Let, let their questions then guide you where you go. But again, right, it reminds me of just how significant this site is and the impact. And, and a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. some of this. So it's right here in your, back, in, in your backyard. It's, you you got to come. you got to come, you experience it, and see because there really is some significance to this site and, and its influence in the state history as well as the national history. So um, we, you do. You have to experience yeah. it. I couldn't have said that any better. That's a great way to put it. And you know what? That's probably a good place for us to stop. <laughs> That's true. Think? But we can't stop there without acknowledging the one and only producer, director, cinematographer, videographer, set man. There's a new one for you. Oh, there's a new one. Chief Grip, too. That, that's another new one oh. for you. Electrician. Electrician. Need to work on that. Lighting technician. Battery. Battery technician. Yeah. Who asked him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but most important of all, an all-around nice guy. Mr. Joe Teach, we appreciate all your work every and, day. And humble. 
as the day is long. I always forget that part. He, he's so humble, I forget how humble he yeah, is. Yeah, you, you do tend to overlook that. And I of course, I, you know, I'd like to thank Dwayne for, for, yes. for stopping in. Thank you for having me. I'm, today, I'm so. super proud of this site and so glad it's part of our community. So glad to be here. So with that, we'll say goodbye until next month. Mm -hmm.